Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jake, this is Nadia, this is Buddy, this is Sedona, and Babu is downstairs, and today we are talking about Bo is Afraid. Yes. A much uh, requested- I was afraid. A much requested film. Ari Aster, who, Ari, who yeah. directed um, Ari, Ari. Hereditary and Midsommar. I think my expectations were try, trying to be level. You know, I heard a lot of mixed things. It's three hours long and everyone was talking about how it was a real big swing, sort of kind of like how Damien Chazelle did with Babylon, but this was obviously very different. Mm. It really wasn't so much a horror movie as a kind of surreal nightmare. Really long film too. <laughs> really long. Um, yeah. I just want to know what you thought of it because I really don't know. You didn't, yeah. we didn't talk about it. Well, I was getting a lot of anxiety watching yeah, it like yeah. i was so anxious the whole time yeah it was I, um, a lot i was actually sad because it was about to go into the weekend and i was like fuck <laughs> i'm gonna my weekend is going to be filled with anxiety now <laughs> why am i watching it is this? it is a movie that's hard it to was shake just off. having it such sticks a, with you yeah it stuck with me but even while i was watching i was like oh man i don't know this is not good this is way too real you know it was just like your nightmares coming to life yeah. and obviously like there was a lot of funny parts i found it so funny I found it really funny, but then it kept getting darker, darker, darker. The ending was like gruesomely dark. <sighs> I just felt like <laughs> it's okay. <sighs> I'm getting anxiety just talking about it, to be honest. Um, you know, like I feel like if you're having a crisis in your life, this is not a skate movie. This is more so. Well, I mean, you know, your yeah. your your life is at least in my opinion, your life is going to maybe get worse. If you, if you have stuff going on in your life, maybe watch this to be like it could be worse. Like I it, guess it you could, could have be that worse. mindset or you could kind of like look at the film. Like sometimes that when I'm having anxiety and then I look at films like this, it's like, okay, hopefully there is like a way out like in, in the tunnel with the character because when the character is going through something and then they come out of it, you somehow feel like you can. I'm not saying that I was going through anything like too extra, but you know, like it's like you have anxiety as a lot of us do about work, finances, all those other things. And then I watch this and I'm like, oh man, and especially if you have had like parental problems in the past. I feel like the most challenging part of the movie though, in a sense, is the structure. Because like you can put up with this kind of like absurdity, this kind of like punishing, grueling, insane, a very Lynchian, I thought, in terms of just like the darkest part that Lynch goes to where it's surreal, but sort of funny in like a disturbing way. It also like the structure is very like um, episodic. Saw an interview, I think, where Ari Aster was talking about pulling from like literature, classic literature and like picaresque novels and character just going on a journey and encountering new things like Gulliver's Travels or something, you know, and I found like, OK, yeah, I see that because it is not structured like normally like like any normal movie it kind of moves into these different situations diving into the horrors and weirdness of this world that Bo is in and you could argue like this is part of him it's all filtered through his own his experiences he has extreme anxiety he has he's very low self-esteem you know he's like constantly being attacked and pursued and or it's like just the world of the the film i mean ultimately you look at like what the movie's trying to say it is kind of all over the place and i but i do feel like that's kind of the point i think like it doesn't want to be totally coherent in a logical way like there are certain things that have payoffs that are really funny like in the final act there's also so much that's like what why was that there and you just have to if you can't just sit back and enjoy that and go that's just the experience then you're not going to enjoy it you're gonna probably hate it because it actively like fights the audience in a way that even though it's so different from babylon i keep thinking of it in a way where it's another big swing and a miss in terms of box office where two directors with tons of clout were just kind of trying to do this all-timer of a movie to tr put everything out there and kind of, you know, stick a needle in the in everyone's ass. Do something that was assaultive, that was just like mean and nasty. I went in with that expectation of like, this movie might be fucking hard to watch. It might get under my skin. And I need to kind of appreciate it for doing that because there is a place in, I think, art for that. And after it, I was kind of amazed. It's so uncompromising. It's doing what it wants to do. And there's so much in there that's brilliant and funny. And the filmmaking is alive and energetic. And Joaquin Phoenix is incredible in it. And incredible. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and it's unlike 
so many other movies, a million movies that are out, you know, you watch this and you feel a million different things. You're, you're like, I'm compared to feeling nothing watching most movies. Very much. Okay, so I think it's mostly anxiety, but however, there is holes in that anxiety with laughter, love, and grace. Yeah, there were things it was trying to but do. But it's wrapped say. up. The burrito, the tortilla is called anxiety. Make no mistake. Oh, no. Yeah, it's Inside called Bo is Afraid tortilla, for a reason. It's about... There might be a little ingredients of love, happiness, uh, blah, 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 no. blah, adventure. But don't... It's, it's well, the anxiety. The yeah. burrito is called anxiety burrito. I agree with you. I think that... But I just... It's so kooky. <laughs> it's so kooky and it's great i mean honestly i didn't like think of joaquin phoenix as a great actor as he is until this film just amazing the directing was amazing but it's it's kind of like babylon in a way that it's very specific to users i don't think a lot of people would really watch this film out of like you know just because it's so long it goes it's a very artistic <laughs> film you right? for me and i kept going like oh Oh, there's more. Yeah. Oh, there's more. Because yeah. oh, because also the structure is different. It's not structured exactly. like a normal movie where you're going like, when is it? You can kind of feel when a normal movie is going to end. This, you're just like, I have it no idea. It keeps going. And when it ends, it's very like, oh, wow, that was the ending? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like a conclusive, like, you don't walk out of it satisfied. You walk out of it it's, feeling It's more a depressing ending. Depression, yeah. And I I, I felt like, I, oh my God, there, there's a big shock in the film. A lot of, like, surprises in the film, and I, I can't wait to get to, uh, to that in the spoiler section. Interesting, because you would think the theme of the film is really like a person dealing with a narcissistic family member. How, what that does to your psyche when you, you interact internalize pain and make it your own fault instead of and are you lose the objective point of view and I think that's what like Bo is afraid is really like shows me my personally is like he loses all objective point of view about life he lives in fear because he's been raised in fear he has a perception that you are consistently wondering if it's a perception or reality created by him because we are in his head I feel like you are alone and isolated and your abuser turns out to be God and is right about every single thing like that. In right and not in a moral sense, but more factual sense because your abuser yeah. is the one who created your world. So therefore you you have, you have no exception, no nothing that you have to live by the rules. And that is why it's a scary world, you know? And that's where I think like anxiety really comes from. Um, I really want to get to spoiler section. Well, well, before we do get into it, I want to say like, like, obviously, the movie's begging for, like, a Freudian interpretation. Like, it's all about mothers and, like, masculinity. And, like, it's it's clearly, like, there's a lot to be said there in it. And, and it's very intentional. But it could be read in so many different lenses. Like, you could really put... Because it's so open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like, I do feel like there is... You could very well do, like, a Marxist... Uh, interpretation of the movie where you it know it, his, so the, the mother in, in extremely wealthy and like she's like this owner of a big company you know and he and also it could be seen as like modern isolation and fear and like this representation of how we you in the modern age it. are terrified of each other and and uh, social connection and and what you can also think of it like in a person who's detached in nature you can think about it like that because there's a lot of na nature allegory in the film. But also, you can, it, like it's like honestly, whatever political point of view you have, it can really be seen as your point of view. It's very like, I think it's artistic in a way, in my opinion, where you can really like mold the film into your liking. I think the consistency in the film that will probably resonate is that you're in a world that you weren't asked to be in and have to find a way to survive and play by the rules that doesn't play by your ideology. I don't know if well, that makes sense, but also like, it's just not a nurturing film. It's a very- no. It's, it's a, a hostile very, movie. Yeah, it's very like, I'm going to deplete your energy to the maximum film. Yeah, and I think like, but there are people who are saying like, they couldn't, recommend the movie or like the movie because they themselves have great relationship with their parents or something. They're like, I couldn't get into it. It's clearly a very personal movie from Ari Aster, but there are people who are like, you're from the perspective of a Bo. Bo isn't like a super fleshed out character, but I think that's because we're living inside him. It was almost like video game where it's well, like, you are I mean. Bo but then you, going you, through this you world. You start to question, you think of it that way, but you start to question like, is this reality or are we in his head? 
Well, I th- hold on, hold on. Be- beyond that, because I, what I, the point I was trying to make is that, like, I think that there is way more to it than just, like, if you have these experiences, you can't relate to it because it is so hyper-specific. I think it's like the movie's trying to put you into his nervous system and trying to get you to experience the world like that. But, you know, apply it to anything, you know. There's there's so much in the movie where it's... I think it's more than that, you know. Can get to spoilers. But, oh, we got to rate it. Um, um, okay, what would you rate it? I would rate it a 7 out of 10. All right, 10 out of 10. Wow, okay. And I, I just, I wow. feel like I I have to go there because I... This is the first ever, I think. No, I think I gave Babylon 10 out of 10. I've given 10 out of 10s, I think. We compare this to Babylon, so I don't obviously know. you can see a trend. I just, with your I just felt like, I do feel like people are kind of underrating it at this moment. And I think years from now, people are going to say, what was wrong with people? That was one of the most interesting it has movies. It stick with you. That was one of the most interesting movies to come out of the 2020s. Like, people are insane. And I, I do think, like, it just needs to be watched multiple times, probably. And, um, I mean, my rating may change, but I just have to applaud, like, the originality. The, it's a timeless film, I think. I... Uh, it's just so out there and it's so unique that I just have to give it that high of a score. Was Jake afraid watching this? Oh, yeah. I was very afraid. <laughs> Jake is afraid. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. So basically in the film, the biggest thing was you think that Bo's mom is dead and you think the whole journey is about him trying to make it to her funeral. Then you realize where it shows up after... He has sex with his childhood crush Mm -hmm. and she dies because Bo's mom tells him that like he, his dad died while he like was doing it with her. So anyway. Well, you realize the whole movie is basically just a setup and a punchline for this joke of Bo thinking like he can't have sex his entire life because because he'll die. die. But then then he ends up like killing his childhood crush. She dies on top of him. Yeah. And then that's when the mom shows up. So apparently the mom was watching him have sex and all those other things. Well, and I thought like, oh, this is a dream sequence. But she's like, no, I staged this and killed the housekeeper with a chandelier in order to track you. And then she pulls out the therapist and it's like. Well, and then you see the whole entire film, like Bo's going through everything he can in order to make it home. He really is trying to put his mom as a priority, but nothing that he does is good enough for the mom. And you can see the pure hatred and pure pure narcissism the mom has for her son is that you are here to serve me. The thing that I was questioning was that like in his dreams, he has where he has like a rebellious twin who was locked up in the attic for like being rebellious and he was like the good was that like because when he when he gets locked up in the attic he sees an adult version of the twin what twin were you talking about do you remember the flashback scene oh no that's a dream sequence he talks about he keeps having a dream where he sees himself being locked in an attic and then i and thought then it was he, his twin he, no 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 it's a dream version of himself and then he's telling his mom and then the mom says like you know why you keep having that dream it wasn't a dream it was a memory and then she locks him as an adult up in the attic and he sees his father, who was a giant penis monster, literally. No, I remember that, but there was also a boy there. Yeah, but I'm, I don't think that was... He He has no twin, I don't think. Okay, because that's what confused me. Because there was a boy there, too. A, like a grown person there who was extremely skinny. So I thought maybe that he lock, she locked her his twin up there and starved him. I don't him. think there was a twin. I think it was more okay. like him... As a kid, you know. Memory. Got it. Because it was a perception when he has the memory. Perception was from the bathtub. It was almost like he was watching. Like, I know she said it was a memory, but it was almost like it was a memory of him seeing it being done to someone else instead of it being done to him. Yeah, I think that was just the way he was perceiving it. Not okay. like, yeah. But um, I mean, that whole thing where like, I have no idea how to interpret penis monster I, it was really funny <laughs> you know well i mean like, like he's afraid of what a penis does because his mom he it correlates that to death it's like you're my son you're my own like you i own you hmm. and you have to always like love me and put me above everyone else her telling him to be afraid of penis and sex it's like a way that he can never be truly intimate because he's afraid of that act so in that way he will never experience something with another person that he has never experienced or cannot experience with his mom it, it's also like it's weird because it has that tone of like this is horrifying and really disturbing but it's also like just like a joke well i mean all all of that was a joke right like i mean like she the, the the body of the mother is headless 
which we tur- which turns out to be not the mother, the loving housekeeper who like was a nanny basically to um, Bo. He does everything he can. He literally like gets almost killed. And by the way, when he uh, when he gets stabbed in the very beginning of the film, he ends up living with this couple. We're kind of who, working backwards to the movie. Now. Yeah, we are. We um, are. So I mean, we're hoping that by this time when you're seeing this, you've already seen the film. So it's not. Oh like yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. See it's it. not a summary section, but like more of an analysis. But like when he lives with that couple, it's like they're replacing him. I love and so a very that nurturing sequence. mom yeah. who's replacing her dead son with yeah. Bo yeah. and wants him to stay, but then Bo is, wants to but Bo is afraid and wants to go home to his it, mom's funeral. Well, it was so strange, but it was also so funny. Like that whole sequence where he's like in this family like take and like becoming part of this family and like the daughter hates him and is like trying to frame him well and, because like, the daughter is not given any attention the da- <laughs> daughter is made to live in like sleep in the in the couch while he's given like her bedroom and everything else meanwhile there's a perfectly empty room about her dead son who no one sleeps in so that she rather her daughter sleep on the couch she's also like eating pills like candy um and no one cares so basically the daughter she um takes her own life and frames it as if Bo did it Mm -hmm. and that's when the mom loses it calls him a demon and then asks this other the guy vet to, who has PTSD goes after him yeah. with like a bunch of weapons. So well, because he has a tracking thing on his leg. Yeah. But uh, like, again, the movie just goes from like sequence and set piece to set piece and horrible. That's why it feels like very like 17th century, like literature, you know, just very like episodic. Uh, of course the opening sequence, the whole city stuff was just amazing. Like so dark, but funny. Like you have the, like this murderer who just like stabs people. I forget what they call him, but he just <laughs> like all the graffiti on the, the wall was so weird and like he gets these pills that he has to take with water and then when he takes them it's like it's like the water's off he can't get any water and then he looks up side effects and like the first results are just like remembering john you know mm-hmm. like people dying and then he just has to try to get out like every time he's out in the street he's running from maniacs and lunatics like it it was just like like just capturing the mind of someone who's just like fearful about every little thing and all of it going wrong I do have to say, I think one of the best sequences, and I think a lot of people will say this about the movie, is when he's in the forest and there's these like actors who are in the forest putting on this production and then Bo watches this and becomes transported and like becomes part of this stage play. And it's very beautiful. It has like these oh my God, I love wonderful that. set pieces. And I think it's the best. <laughs> I think people love it so much because it's the only part of the movie where you don't feel assaulted by the movie. Well, all, it's also in a cartoon. Well, it's like a cartoon animated. Like it's it's a yeah. it's it's like this story of him in like an alternate world where he's like living this like folk story. Where but did his... you see the wife was his mom? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think it, it was. If I don't. I'm not... She was wearing a mask, so I don't know. No, in the fantasy world, I think it's like he sometimes like it was funny. It's like he marries her, he loves her. Sometimes. He thinks he lo- he thinks she looks like a man. Oh, there, uh, yeah, there was that kind of weird stuff thrown in yeah. there. It was so funny, but yeah. it was nevertheless kind of like a restful period in the movie, and it kept. Again, it was so long that you're going, is this going to be the rest of the movie? That mm-hmm. The movie was so exciting. You just like, there was nowhere, no way to know where it was going to go at any point. And you keep watching this and it's like the story, like he loses his family and he lives to be an old man until finally one day he finds his sons. He, you know, they're like, oh my God, dad, it's you. And, and then he's like, he's mentioned something about how he like couldn't have kids because he would die. And then they're like, well, then how did you have us? Mm -hmm. And again, the whole sequence just is a a joke. It was just like a shaggy dog joke of of like leading up to this like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then it's this the end of it, you know. So it's like there was also a lot of meaning and a lot of feeling where you could sense like Bo seeing this alternate version of life where like this, he should be living this like world and having family and building connections. And yet his world is so isolated and full of hostility it was very moving but also sort of like ironic and sad i was it was very it was one of my favorite sequences well and then also i really love how like um how he meets his mate maybe a dad his dad 
you know, and then the dad basically dies for him during the play scene. Oh, that was, again, yeah, that was so strange. Yeah. yeah. Um, can we talk about the ending? Oh, so yeah, he like strangles his mom. He strangles his mom almost to death, but then he like, because he snaps because she basically tells him like, I hate you, you're blah, 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 blah. And he snaps. Very good performance for them. And he then realizes he snaps out of it. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm choking my mom. It's like, I'm so sorry, mom. I'm so sorry. And then, there's you know. A trial. And then there's a, well, and then he leaves. And on a boat. He leaves on a boat. He And then um, the machine stops working the, the, the stops in like a little bit of a arena. <laughs> it's a creepy. And, and in the arena, there is a judgment person. And then right next to the witness is the mom, yeah. almost like an attorney. And the judge person, the person who has a power to like actually bestow judgment is the mother. And that's what I mean when I said earlier, it's like if you're narcissistic, if the person like who was a narcissist was God, because he's basically at the end of his life being judged based on his actions. And because it's it's, it's her world, she shaped him to have the fears and feelings and everything that she has. He is in his head, and this is what I think, judged by her perception and he can't escape it. Even his therapist that he thought he could trust you find out later on that he was recording everything and giving that to his mother. So <laughs> that was... basically every aspect of his life is controlled by this, you know, But not person. only every aspect of his life, but also like she owns this massive company where you see the label of like the MW or whatever. That's on everything in the movie, the microwave, the food he eats. Exactly, like, exactly. So it's 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 really her it's world. Like and it's eye, shaped. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Even though morally you may not agree, just like the way that it's created and the way that anxiety works I mean, in my analogy, it, he f- fails to please her because she's a narcissist. Anything but him devoting every single second of his life to her, still it wouldn't be good enough for her. Him doing anything independently on his own that he did, living in a different place and all those things was not good enough. He gets judged by it and gets killed. The boat turns over and he dies. And that's basically the end of the film. Mm-hmm. Because And when, you, when, when the person, the attorney guy, you know, who's making like a statement the prosecutor is saying this is bad she didn't do it. it's obviously when you hear it like it's like oh my god this is all wrong point this is so wrong you're like crucifying this person for doing nothing but like but just li- being able to trying to live his life for himself instead of his mom but because it's a perception of the mother she's crucified nonetheless and that's like the anxiety feeling thing that i like that, the that's, guilt. that's the evident throughout the thing is yeah. the guilt never leaves you and not only that you're held accountable for your guilt like almost like your guilt that you must have in this world that you can't escape literally physically and mentally emotionally whatever it is going to drown you and it eventually does well and i think that's why uh like it, it was so depressing like leaving the movie or kind of shocking because the whole movie you're hoping he can kind of get out of this cycle or or this trial you're thinking like he needs to break free but it's like he can't like he's helpless the whole movie and he's defeated you know it's he's really, defeated completely it's but it's, it's so sad because like you can see when he leaves his mom's house at the end like how much like in his face and like again another testament to how great of an actor walking phoenix is like you can see he's dying inside like a dead man walking basically but he still is it takes out the strength that he has in his body to go and escape and leave into no planned like destination he's just leaving you know and he might like die and as a result of it depending on where he lands like by hunger or whatever no but he ends up dying by guilt like he ends up literally dying like everything is against him nothing works for him in this whole entire film well and something interesting too is the last shot of the movie it holds throughout the credits and you just see this boat upside down and it's like they're struggling where he's like drowning and then it's still and then it's the credits, but you're watching this like audience, you know, of people and the audience, we see glimpses of them, but they're just like normal people. It looks like a movie theater audience. And it's kind of like, kind of funny, I guess. See the bubbles go up in the water at the end, seeing him struggle till the very end until like life just gets away from him. It's agonizing. It's agonizing <laughs> and so it's like oh my god it's like and that's what i mean i'm like it's it's not i don't think it's a very go- 
like popular film are going to be but it, I, I do agree with you in the sense that it's very artistic and it is going to be a timeless film because it's so artistically done and I think Ari because of his previous credits such as like Hereditary used his street creds in the film to be able to make something like this that's an art piece you know and I think it's it's rare for films like this to exist and I think eventually I agree with you it's going to be something that we're gonna remember as like whoa you you have to see that it's a kooky film yeah I yeah. agree all right anything else no all right well I'll talk to you guys soon and let us know what you think thanks bye thank you bye